everyone. It's Al Nigren again, executive director and curator of the New Jersey Film Festival, back with another filmmaker interview for you. The New Jersey Film Festival Spring 2020 installment will be taking place between January 25 and February 28th, and will be showing over 40 films, which also includes another little festival called the United States Super 8 Film and Digital Video Festival, which will be on February 23 and uh, 22 and 23. Um, there'll be two free film screenings sponsored by the Confucius Institute at Rutgers University, and they'll be on February 21st and 28th. Check our website for more information. You can always go there at www.njfilmfest.com for more information. Just click on schedule to get uh, all the info, how to get tickets, parking, driving directions, and that kind of stuff. The film festival is in its 38th year, and we're proud to be doing this for New Jersey audiences for that long, and we bring in as many artists as we can to promote and show their films to our community. So we're proud to have Etienne Labouze here today, who's the director of Diwali, which is a short experimental film poem yeah. uh, that you made in the last couple of years mm -hmm. and now is now premiering at our festival. So welcome, Etienne. Thank you. Thank you so much. Tell us about this film and how you ended up making it. So I wasn't planning to make a film at first. Uh, I went to India because one of my friends was getting married there. and. You know, I had made two movies prior to that, and I just assumed, you know, I would take my camera because I've heard so much about India and how photogenic the place is. So I went and it was beautiful, so I just filmed whatever I could. And then I came back to America and I was taking this class at Rutgers with Mary Shaw. It was a poetry class. Mm. Um, so I also write a little bit of poetry. And she asked me to, instead of writing a normal paper, uh, to do something more fun and make a movie. So I assumed I could use some of the footage I had from India and combine it with the poem. And yeah, and the movie really uh, sprang out from the editing mm -hmm. uh, more than anything. Yeah. Yes, and, and the sun is a very important element in your film. I mean, it features throughout, mm -hmm. and you look at the the sun as shining the light on the subjects where you see these folks either bathing or in mm -hmm. their domiciles and and yet the 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 voiceover the poem itself or the a fragments of the poem mm -hmm. comment on what you see is that something that you wanted to do yeah uh more or less i f feel like the poem was really personal i was mm -hmm. going through some some trouble in my personal life right. and I felt like I needed to say something but I couldn't say it just overly so I had to find a, uh, a an, al an alternative to uh, to talk about this and I really when I was in India I felt like I could have I mean I I felt comfortable yeah um, I re related and you know I've lived in a few places and I don't know it's also a commentary on social classes and politics. Yes, very much so. So, so I wanted to uh, talk about all that and especially the relationship between submission and domination, right. which is very strong in India because, you know, the, of the uh, caste uh, yeah. system yeah. that's in place. And women certainly have mm. a, a yeah. secondary role. And, and, and that's why I like the fact that you have two different voices, and mm -hmm. one is male, your own voice, mm -hmm. as well as somebody else who's yeah. female. Mm -hmm. So that kind of adds to the political aspect of the film. Yeah, yeah. I, at first it was just my voice, and then I realized they would have, it would enrich the movie if I used uh, a woman's voice too. And um, I knew someone who had a very soothing, beautiful voice, so yeah. I asked her. And, yeah, she, she did okay. a good job yeah. too. And I, I, I also see that s the imagery that you show is is um, manipulated graphically. Uh, yes, a little bit. I, also, this is something that I uh, stumbled stumbled upon uh, playing with the software that I was using. I was using Adobe for the first time. Yeah, yeah. And before that, I was just using Final Cut. Um, and I don't know. It just uh, it was an accident. That's okay. Really That's some of the yeah. best things that happen in films. Sometimes are the accidents. Yeah, I've, I've heard that. Yeah. 
Well, that's wonderful. So d tell us a little bit more. The film was made how long ago? I mean, you shot mm -hmm. this footage last year? Yeah, I shot the footage last year. So it was in 2018, and I did it um, early this year, 2019. And how much footage did you shoot? And I had, um, I didn't have, I mean, I had hours for sure. Right, right. Um, I filmed my friend's wedding, and I didn't use any of it. Yeah. I think I used more of the, the, the trips or the places I was exploring. I right. used more of that footage. But yeah, I had hours, and you know, I had a first cut, and then I realized I really have to condense all this and mm. you know, go to the essential. And um, you know, a lot of it is just experimenting and trying to improve my craft and uh, get to the core are, you know, I have a hard time cutting. Yeah, that's, so that's I try always, to, yeah. it's always hard to cut one's own footage, but yeah. your film is a very tight, almost 10 minutes, mm -hmm. and I think it's very, very smooth. It moves effortlessly from one scene to the next. It's quite beautiful. Thank you. And, and folks, you absolutely have to come and see this film, which is premiering on Friday, February 7th. It's the first of a series of films. The second is called Lo et la Vie, Water is Life, From Standing Rock to the Swamp by Sam Vinal. He's from Los Angeles, California. It's a film about um, activists in the swampland of Louisiana fighting a pipeline that's being built there. It's an environmental documentary. And it's about uh, 25 minutes long. And then the final film is also a short documentary called The 12,000 by Eric Davis and Randy Watson. They're from British Columbia, Canada. And this is a, a, the story of a young woman who was um, kidnapped from Nepal and sold in India. Um, so a lot of slave mm. labor that takes place. So it's a very important film. And the 12,000 refers to these uh, young women who were taken and sold uh, from Nepal to India. So there's a kind of connection that sure. weaves through all of these films. Yeah. As a curator, it's my job to kind of find a home right. for these films that are selected by our jury. So uh, Etienne will be there to do a Q&A, as will Eric Davis and Randy Watson. So come and join us, folks, Friday, February 7th, starting at 7 p.m. in Voorhees Hall, room 105 at 71 Hamilton Street at Rutgers University in New Brunswick, New Jersey. More information is at njfilmfest.com. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you so you. much. I caught myself striving to be the light spread across the wooden floor. Subdued by the lampshade. Ushered down ingrained on the wall. <laughs>